Hello my crafty friends. This is the prep video for the project that Tanya and I are doing in October and November. And um, what it is, it's book carving. These are pictures that I took with my phone from a museum, an art museum exhibition uh, a couple of years ago. And when I saw this book and the way that it had been carved up, I had this book at home. I, I hadn't bought it too much before that. Uh, that's why I remembered I had it, and I decided right then I was going to do this to this book. Um, that's the first book carving that I saw, and then I saw this one, which I think would be a lot of fun to do as well, uh, one with a, um, a graphic novel. That would be really interesting. And then there was this one, and this one is carved down through a book. It was an anatomy book. And they just carved and left, you know, pictures. And even part of the book is gone except for this down here. So it's just kind of an abstract thing that they made by carving the book. It didn't use, you know, the actual pictures or words that were in the book. But all three of these ways of carving books intrigued me. And so I printed these off to show you. This is where I got the idea of wanting to do this a couple of years ago. And um, I hope before we start this in October, I can find this book. But I have looked and looked and looked. It is not where I thought it was. And I had kept it in that spot for a long time because I knew this is what I was going to do with it. But it's not there now. So last time I reorganized things, I must have put it somewhere else. But I have no idea where that is. So I hope I can find it before we get started because this is something I want to do but moving on from there um, there are lots of different kinds of books you can use and in the description box down below I will have I think it's four or five maybe six videos I'm not sure none of them are real long but they all show what I'm talking about and some of them actually show artists um, a little bit doing this but not they don't show very much so um, a lot of this is just going to be um, you know by trial and error <laughs> but um, and there's also a Pinterest board link there for a Pinterest board that I created of carved book images that you can go and look at and you can see how many different ways there are to do this and um, most of those are done by just a few artists but um, anyway I wanted you to have that those things to look at so you can see what we're doing I did uh, the other night play with this little book and in one of those uh, videos the girl says this book is too thin and she's talking about a book about this size but she loved the images and I think to get the real depth um, that you get from these this book is too thin but it was a good place to practice a good place to start so this is what I came up with let me take that okay let's move these <laughs> sorry these are things that cut out of the book this is something I cut off of a, a, a page and I'm gonna add it right here but um, but I want to show you a few things. I learned a few things just working on this little book. Number one, if it's this narrow of a book, you don't get quite the depth. You can make fun pages, but you don't get quite the depth you do with a thicker book. Um, but let's just look at this, what I got here. Okay, this was one page. And then this was the next page. See, I took the whole page out because I didn't want anything on there. And then here was the third page. And um, I took everything off of these next three pages I took out. And then here was another one. Four pages I took everything out. Five. Took everything out of those five pages. <laughs> and then this was the sixth page. And I wanted that to be part of my picture. So um, I kept that part. But this is, um, and I took that out because I didn't like it. That's two more pages. I just took the whole page out. But neither one of these last pages were something I wanted. 
But this is one of the pages that was over here on this side, and that's an issue with some books. A lot of the pictures are on the wrong side. So, um, but what I decided to do, and I'm going to do it right now with you. We're just going to do it. Um, what I decided to do was to glue this in. Now, I want to make sure I'm getting it in the right place. Okay. One nice thing about when you take a page from another book is that you can move it around. I mean, another page and add it in. Okay. Now then, um, I liked these birds. They were in the middle of this page or at this end of this page, actually. They were like right here. But I don't want them right there because they will be hidden by this tree here. See? And I want them to be seen. So I want them to be about right there. Because I want to see them, but I don't want um, I don't want the edge of that picture to show. So I want it to hide behind this tree. Um, let me get my art glitter glue. It'll be easier to just put underneath there. So I'm going to lift this up. and glue it down and hope I got that in the right spot. Let's take it back and look. Okay, I need to, if I can scoot it over a little, I need to scoot it over this way. Just a little. There we go. Okay. So now I've got all of that where I want it and then I'm going to add him in here because he's actually the main character. <laughs> and I could add him right there, but I don't think he would show up as much as if I put him right here. Although, if I put him right here, you can see this cat looking at him. So I think I am going to put him right there. Um, But I need to glue all these pages down um, before I put him in there. And I didn't do anything to the front of the book. I didn't take the front off. And, of course, uh, most of these are made where you see through the front cover. Now, I played with a couple of books that were really damaged that I knew if I messed up the front cover of them, it wouldn't hurt anything. And I had a really hard time cutting through that cover with an exacto knife you could cut through it with other things it'd probably be fine but with an exacto knife it was not easy to do so i may since this is such a skinny little book anyway i may just leave it like this and when it opens up this is what we've got it's just a one page book you know um and i think it turned out really cute to have all those layers in there and um, I'll have this glued down before we start so you can see what it looks like finished. But basically, it's going to look just like this. And that was a really fun little project. So if you're, a, if you're afraid of this book carving thing, I would get a skinny little book and just do this much to it. Now, I do need to glue all those pages to each other and then to the back cover. But that won't be hard to do. Just a little bit of glue right here. Um, we'll glue them all down, and then I'll glue him right on top of that. And I may even put a pop thingy under him to make him show pop up a little bit. But um, but that was a really fun project, and it was real. It took me, you know, um, two or three hours to do it. So if you don't want to commit to something big, this would be a good way to go. After I did, and I've got this is the leftover stuff from this book. After I did this, I wanted to try another one, and um, I was I wanted to try it where you glue all the pages together, and then you start from the top and carve your way down. And um, I chose a book that I didn't have any need or desire for that nothing I would it was it, it was even just words, 
and it wasn't even a book I wanted to read. I just wanted to see what it would be like to try to cut through from the top down. And, um, and it was a struggle because I didn't get this edge over here was too far over and it covered up some of the words and I and once I had that done it didn't look like it on the first page but down below when I took out that first page the words were a little bit behind this and um, and it was kind of a struggle and then uh, but I learned some things from doing that number one I learned you don't want to try to cut through a ton of pages at one time and um, that was important, and that helped me when I got to this one. The other one I started doing, um, I had just grabbed it at the thrift store not too long ago because it was water damaged, and I thought nobody's going to want this, even though it's gorgeous Norman Rockwell paintings, but it would be fun to adjust and make a new painting out of his paintings. Um, so I still think that would be a really fun project to do, but when I started trying to cut into that one, I realized that there was it wasn't just water damage there was some mold and so I threw it away so those are the two that I threw away and um, and then I start, decided to do this one because the back of it was damaged but I didn't know how how would you cut through this you would have some words and some and I didn't like the idea of that um, I'm gonna show you one in a minute where I think I may leave something from the front but I decided just to take this off right here and let this be, this is the, was the front page inside the flyleaf type page. And then, um, so I cut that and I cut down to where I saw this elephant. And then I've been cut, I cut the elephant. I'm still trying to get past the elephant through these other pages. Um, but what I've done here is kind of, Oops. glue these together while I'm going through it and I didn't do that up here and it's buckling so that was um, but that way I can move the pages and I can choose what's next and what I want to be next is this little train but by doing it this way I'm losing a bottom edge as I go deeper and deeper so pretty soon I will need to find something on the bottom that I want to keep um, or I'm going to end up with, well, you could just have to put a hanger on it and hang it on the wall, but uh, you couldn't stand it up in a bookshelf and it would be hard to do even now because this edge down here still has the cover. So, um, Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to knock you for a loop. Anyway, I thought I would just um, quickly show you kind of what I'm doing with this one. Like I said, I'm still trying to get down to this page. So I've got my cutting board thing here. And, um, and I'm cutting around this elephant so that the elephant is layers and layers thick. Okay, so that's the, the premise behind doing it this way is that you can do that. You can leave the layers, um, you know, behind what you're cutting. Okay, now evidently up there at that edge I have cut mostly all the way through. So I don't need to go back there, but um, I think I've pretty much gone through that too. Yeah. Okay. And while I'm really not necessarily trying to do it all, you know, all these pages at once, it is nice to do a few at once. So um, um, I'm just going around. The elephant. One reason I'm wanting to do this on camera, let me move these books, I'm going to show you these in a minute, is because I want to see if we can actually work on this um, on camera without um, getting our head in the way. 
because that would be a not very fun video just to look at the tops of our head while we try to cut things out. And one, one thing that has happened, because I am really new to this, <laughs> is that this elephant's trunk has gotten narrower and narrower because um, I was actually grabbing the trunk as I went down. And now I'm learning to turn my blade a little bit so I get underneath it. Um, because I'm doing that, the pay the all the pages underneath it won't be quite you know as big as his trunk is but um but that's okay the main point is for them to hold him in position so that he doesn't fall down um, his leg has gotten a little narrower, too. <laughs> He's losing weight as we go. And you kind of have to, you have to move the book a lot while you're doing this. And I'm coming over here. So right now what I've really got is um, two layers. The first layer is this um, curtain and the second layer is this is the elephant. And when you're starting out, um, simpler shapes might be the way to go. Some of those in the Pinterest board are done like in dictionaries, and so they just cut out little squares that have the pictures in them, you know, from the di dictionary. And, um, and so it's not... You don't have to go around things like this. You just you're just going um, okay. I'll have to go back there and figure out what I didn't cut right. And you can tear, you know, some of it so that you can get back to um, the other parts. Okay. So we're still, you know, I'm still working on getting through this. I don't know how much. Okay, let's. You don't have to be as precise underneath because you just need it to hold it up. You don't need it to be exactly the same. Um, See, that one, I messed up the trunk, but we can just take it off. It's not that big of a deal because it's just holding this in place, and it's mostly doing that anyway.
now then I can see here that part of this trunk You know, underneath is not as clean. Okay. And sometimes the pages shift, and so you have to figure out what happened there. Okay, let's take this out. So that's where we are right now and we're going to have the little train here and I don't know yet if I'll just cut him you know like right here or if I'll leave this. Um, if I can find something to go back here that would probably be better so I'll probably cut him out and it may I may end up just going straight down and not since he's got some white over here it won't hurt to have some white there. But so what um and I'm just kind of gluing these pages down as we go so the next thing that I have to do is just um, let me put this up so I don't accidentally get myself is to look behind the train for something that goes down here so I'm just gonna kind of pick up the pages and look and see if there's something that goes all the way to the bottom see a lot of them don't and that could be a problem Now we could go that far and we could let some of these bunnies be in here. In fact, we could just go kind of around the bunnies and leave this whole thing. Because we would need to leave the sides. So that's one option. It doesn't look like there are very many things that go all the way to the bottom. There's a car. Now there's just a part of a car, but it's not it doesn't go down as far as I would like for it to go.
See, this picture goes mostly all the way down, but then you have to decide where do you cut it off, where do you stop it at. Okay, here, this one goes all the way down. It's a boat, but um, but there's something down there. That's a long ways down before we get here. So I don't know if that's a good plan or not. But we don't have that much more room to fill up. So it might be. So we're going to stick this under there and I'll think about it later. But I just wanted to show you kind of, this is my, my practice book, my second practice book. Um, trying to see how this will work. Now because I didn't glue this up here, it's um, bowing and... All of that. Now... That'll, that'll help it a little bit. Okay, so there's there's a look at that. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and show you some um, things to think about when you're choosing books. Get rid of this. And I'm going to um, move these two out of the way as well. Okay. Now, you've got this book. It's still kind of narrow, so it would not be such a huge challenge. And it's got um, some pretty cool drawings in it that you could use. You need you want to look and make sure you've got some kind of drawing somewhere that covers each part of the page so you could add them in. And this one does do that. There are drawings at the top, drawings at the bottom, drawings in the middle. So you just kind of have to plan what all you want in there. So that one might be a good one to do. Uh, here's a book. This is a um, it's kind of an encyclopedia type book. It's called Lands and People, Southern Asia and the Far East. So this is an encyclopedia kind of book. But it's got black and white and color pictures, which I think it would be fun to have a mix. Um, some of the pictures are going sideways, which might be cool in there. It might not. It just depends on what you like. But it has a lot of pictures to choose from. I have, just from what I've done, I think it is easier to start at the front and go to the back. That way you can add pieces in to your, and you can see what it looks like with this as what's next. Um, but I guess you could do the same thing starting at the back and work your way forward. That would be a little more challenging, I think. Now here's another children's book, and it's not very thick again, but um, it has a lot of different kinds of drawings in it. It would be a fun one to use, I think. <coughs> this is... Um, an atlas and you could um, you could do maps but this atlas also has some pictures in it <coughs> but um, some of the you know you could do topographical pictures some of them uh, books I've seen you know, they trace certain roads, and then on the next page they trace a different road. and So that's a possibility. Um, right now, this one, it doesn't really appeal to me to do this. But if you really love maps, that would be a fun challenge, probably. Here's a book on carpentry. Sorry. Um, 
So if you like tools, you could do tools. <clears throat> you could also do, you know, parts of blueprints. Um, I've seen several of them done with math books. And so this one has a lot of different things in it. You could just show little pieces of blueprints in different places. So it, it could be fun. This one is the Complete Nonsense Book. <laughs> Not sure what I'm going to do with this book. But it does have, you know, some pictures. The, a lot of the problem is most of these pictures are kind of in the middle. They're kind of all in the same places, which would make it difficult to use. So I don't think it would be a really good candidate for this because everything is right here. You don't have much, you know, that you could separate from top and bottom and left and right. You could, but it would be it would be difficult, to, more difficult to do. This child craft book, I think, would be a lot of fun. Um, it has pictures all the way around the edges. It has pictures, you know, in the middle. Um, and they're lovely pictures. So there's you could do somebody drew on that one yeah no that's the maypole okay <laughs> so you could um, you know you could do something really fun with this one I think it would turn out beautifully if I can't find my other one this may be what I do this is one I've thought about doing um, because it has um, well, it has some black and white pictures, but those weren't the ones I was going to use. Every once in a while, it has one of these pictures. And um, it might be fun to do. But some of the pictures are on this side. And they are small. So, um, it would be difficult to use, I think, unless you'd had some practice. So I probably will save it because the pictures are just too pretty to mess up. But because some of the pictures are on this side, this is why I chose to show it to you. In my head, this is one of the ones I was going to do, but I've changed my mind since then. But the um, when you've got pictures over here, you could take this page out and glue it over here. And then you could use it. So think about that. Um, when you've got a book that has, you know, more pictures on the wrong side... You can also, you can move them over. You could also uh, do the book from the back instead of the front. If all your pictures are on this side. Anyway, that's, that's a thought. I've got, um, let me bring these last two here that are just ideas. This one is a uh, picture dictionary. And I thought it, it might be fun to do, like the big black and white dictionaries, except um, the pictures are, you know, for children, so they're bigger. But it would, it would work because it has pictures in different places. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And you want to be able to layer them in, and you want as many as you can that you can get to from the edge of the page. Because if you're doing a picture that's right in the middle, <coughs> that one would pretty much need to be behind the ones that are on the edges so that it will stay in place. Um, this is another one I thought about, and this is one I thought it might be interesting to take the cover um, and go like around this and down. But once again, when you've got this kind of cover, it's you've got you're gonna have some words or something on it. And I just don't think it would look as good um, cut away as something like this. So that's something to keep in mind too. Um, but inside this <clears throat> are lots of pictures. There are lots of trees in this one. 
And I thought it might be fun. The trees are all in the back. And the rest of it is just a dictionary, you know. So you've got different things. Um, it might be fun to move some of the pages of trees and intersperse them throughout the book. But it also might be fun just to have the trees in the back and have some of these things, you know, these little pictures. When you look at the, um, the Pinterest board, you will see a lot of them with, you know, the tiny little dictionary pictures. Um, and those, I think, would be really cool, but they would take a, a really long time. So you need to think about having quite a few layers that you can get different pictures from, but it not being overwhelming to you for your first one. So... Um, that is something to keep in mind. I don't think one like this would be overwhelming. Uh, this one probably would not be either. But I think this one would be a lot more fun. For me, anyway, it would be a lot more fun to work, work through. Kind of like the one I'm working on right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, um, don't be afraid of it. You can start tiny like I did. Um, and be sure to watch the videos below. They'll inspire you. And look at the Pinterest board and get an idea. And you might come up with some completely different thing. But um, Tanya and I will, you know, kind of be learning as we go. And so it's okay for you to be learning as we go too. <laughs> All right. God bless you. Hope that you'll join us to do this in October and November. Bye-bye.